Have you ever wondered how network address translation works in WAN environments? Welcome tech enthusiasts to another episode of Tech Spectrum Pro. Today, we're diving deep into the world of network address translation, or as it's more commonly referred to, NAT. NAT is a crucial element in the realm of wide area networks, playing an essential role in our everyday internet interactions. It's like the unsung hero of the internet world, working behind the scenes to ensure smooth communication between your private network and the vast public network. This ingenious technology is all about conservation. It helps preserve the limited number of public IP addresses available by allowing multiple devices in a private network to share a single public IP address. Yes, you heard that right. Multiple devices, one public IP address. With NAT, devices can communicate with public networks using private IP addresses. Interesting, isn't it? Now what exactly is Inside Source NAT? Inside Source Network Address Translation, or NAT, is a fascinating piece of networking technology. Its main purpose is to allow multiple devices on a local network to share a single public IP address. By doing so, it greatly conserves the limited number of public IP addresses available worldwide. So how does it work? Well, imagine you have a bustling network of devices, all eager to communicate with the outside world. Each device has its own private IP address, but these addresses can't be used on the public internet. Here's where Inside Source NAT steps in. It takes the private IP addresses and translates them into a public IP address that can be sent out onto the internet. When the responses come back, NAT translates them back into the private IP addresses and directs them to the correct devices. In simple terms, Inside Source NAT is like your own personal post office, handling and directing your network's communication. Time to dive into the process of configuring inside source NAT in a one environment. Let's start by understanding that configuring inside source NAT is a systematic process that involves several critical steps. Each step plays a crucial role in ensuring the smooth functioning of the NAT. Firstly, we need to define the inside and outside interfaces. This is the initial and most crucial step. It tells our router about the interfaces which are inside the network and those that are outside. Next, we move on to creating an access list. This is the step where we identify the local IP addresses that we want to translate. We do this by using a standard access list. Remember, it's the local IP addresses that we want to hide from the outside world. Now, it's time to define the pool of global addresses. This pool is what our local IP addresses will be translated to. It's crucial to ensure there's enough IP addresses in this pool to cater to the number of local IP addresses that need to be translated. The fourth step involves creating a NAT translation. Here, we link the access list and the pool of global IP addresses. This is essentially tying together our local and global addresses. Finally, we need to apply the NAT translation to the appropriate interfaces. This is done by using the IPNAT inside and IPNAT outside commands on the respective interfaces. Each of these steps plays a pivotal role in the overall configuration of inside source NAT. It's like a chain where each link is as important as the other. Missing out on any one step can cause the NAT to malfunction. So it's crucial to understand what each step does and why it's necessary. This understanding will not only help in configuring the NAT, but also in troubleshooting any potential issues that might arise. Configuring inside source NAT may seem complex, but with clear understanding and practice, it becomes second nature. Once you've configured your inside source NAT, how do you know it's working as it should? That's a question every network engineer has likely asked at some point. And it's what we'll be diving into in this segment of our discussion. Verification of any configuration, including that of an inside source NAT, is a critical part of the process. It ensures that your setup is not only accurate, but also functioning properly. Fortunately, Cisco provides a set of handy commands that allow you to check if your inside source NAT is operating as it should. 
Let's start with the most commonly used command, show IP NAT translations. This command provides a snapshot of the NAT translation table. It displays the inside local and global addresses, as well as the outside local and global addresses. By examining this table, you can determine if the NAT translations are occurring as expected. Next, we have the show IP NAT statistics command. This command gives you a summary of the NAT configuration and operation. It includes details such as the number of active translations, hits, misses, and expired translations. This information can be invaluable in troubleshooting any issues with your NAT setup. If you want to look at the details of a specific interface, you can use the show IP NAT translations include command followed by the interface ID. This command filters the output of the show IP NAT translations command to only display the translations related to the specified interface. Lastly, the debug IP NAT command can be used when you need a more detailed insight into the NAT process. This command shows real-time NAT translations as they occur. However, use this command with caution as it can generate a lot of output and potentially impact the performance of your router. Remember, this is not an exhaustive list. There are other commands that can be used based on the specific requirements of your network environment. The key is to understand what each command does and to use it appropriately. Verification is a crucial step in ensuring your NAT is set up correctly and is performing its role. So, don't overlook this step in your inside source NAT configuration process. It's all about making sure that your network is functioning optimally, and that's what good network engineering is all about. So, why is NAT so important in WAN technologies? You may ask? Well, let's delve into that. Network Address Translation, or NAT, plays a pivotal role in wide area network or WAN technologies. It's a bit like the unsung hero of network management, tirelessly working in the background to ensure smooth and secure communication. First and foremost, NAT enhances security. It does this by masking the internal IP addresses of devices within a network. This means that any communication going out to the internet from your network carries a single unified public IP address. To the outside world, it appears as though all traffic is coming from this one address, effectively concealing the individual devices in your network. This way, NAT acts as a first line of defense against potential cyber threats. But the role of NAT in WAN technologies doesn't stop at security. It also helps in conserving IP addresses. We live in a world where every device, from your smartphone to your coffee maker, wants to connect to the internet. This puts a lot of strain on the available pool of IP addresses NATI helps alleviate this strain by allowing multiple devices to share a single public IP address. This means we can have thousands, even millions of devices connected to the internet without running out of addresses. Finally, NAT plays a crucial role in improving network efficiency. By translating private IP addresses into public ones, NAT allows devices within a network to communicate with external networks. This ensures that data packets reach their correct destination without unnecessary detours or delays, resulting in more efficient data transmission. So, to put it simply, NETI is like the conductor of your network orchestra, ensuring all the different parts work together in harmony. It provides security, saves valuable IP addresses, and promotes efficient data transmission. Without NAT, managing a one would be a much more challenging task. NAT, indeed, is a powerful tool in managing and optimizing your one. We've covered a lot of ground today, so how about a quick recap? We started our journey by introducing Network Address Translation, or NAT, a method that remaps IP address spaces. It plays a significant role in conserving global address space, allowing private IP networks with unregistered IP addresses to connect to the Internet. Next, we dove into the specifics of Inside Source NAT. We learned that this type of NAT is used when devices inside the network initiate traffic to the outside world. It's like the outgoing mail department of your network, 
swapping out the private return addresses for public ones before sending packets off into the wide world of the internet. From there, we rolled up our sleeves and got our hands dirty with the actual configuration of inside source NAT. We broke it down into manageable steps starting with defining the inside and outside interfaces, moving on to creating an access list to specify which IP addresses should be translated, and finally setting up the NAT pool of public IP addresses. After that, we didn't just rest on our laurels. We verified our inside source NAT configuration to ensure everything was working as expected. By using show commands such as show IP NAT translations and show IP NAT statistics, we were able to confirm the NAT translation was successful. Finally, we rounded out our discussion by highlighting the critical role of NAT in wide area network technologies. We stressed how NAT helps in managing IP address scarcity enhances security and aids in the smooth operation of large networks spanning multiple locations. In short, we've seen how NAT, and specifically inside source NAT, is a powerful tool in the network engineer's arsenal. It's a crucial part of managing and maintaining the vast, interconnected networks that make up the backbone of our digital world. Remember, understanding NAT and its application is a crucial skill in network engineering. Until next time, keep learning and stay connected.